In this presentation, we'll show how Informatica's application integration platform integrates with all scripts, EHR, and DocuSign. As part of this integration, we'll demonstrate the concepts of composite API creation, stateful orchestration, and API consumption. The concepts of orchestration and API creation and consumption are demonstrated by a member enrollment web service. As part of this business process orchestration, user submits a request containing a list of members for a new enrollment. Cloud application integration process receives the request, applies business rules. In this case, it's validating the address using the address doctor. If the validation succeeds, it then proceeds to creating this patient in all scripts and in Salesforce. All scripts provides a REST API for integration, whereas Salesforce is through the out-of-the-box connector. Once the members have been successfully enrolled, we then reply back to the caller with the unique IDs that were generated by these systems. At this point of time, the process becomes asynchronous in nature. Because it's a new member uh, that has been enrolled, we are required to send certain documents for signatures uh, to the new applicant. We will upload documents to DocuSign using its REST API and then wait until the documents are signed and a callback request is received uh, from DocuSign. While waiting for the callback, we will also give the user the ability to send events to the business process uh, so that uh, they can uh, check the status of what the business process is doing. In summary, what we want to take away from this presentation is how easy it is to create composite APIs, do service orchestration, do stateful orchestration using the application integration platform. I am going to now log into Informatica Cloud Platform here and navigate to the application integration component. Uh, go into my uh, artifacts. Open up the member enrollment process. This is the business process that orchestrates basically the entire use case. Uh, the first step is applying business rules. In our case, we are validating the address. And uh, that is done uh, by a sub-process because this is a reusable entity. Uh, and the sub-process actually calls Informatica's address doctor. If the validation succeeds, then it goes ahead and creates a patient in the All Scripts application. All Script exposes a REST API uh, for us to interact with. So you can see the orchestration here. Again, this sub-process by itself is exposed as an API. Uh, the first step would be to get the token and then use that token to save the patient in All Scripts. If this succeeds, then we go ahead and create those members in salesforce.com. We have a custom object called subscriber where we are storing this information. Once the uh, member enrollment has successfully completed both in all scripts and Salesforce, we reply back to the caller with the unique IDs that were generated by these systems. So the milestone step indicates that we are replying back to the caller and the business process is going to move on. Once we have replied back, that's when the business process takes a synchronous turn. Um, the final step in the business process is actually uploading documents to DocuSign. Uh, so the, this step here is a call to a process that will call the DocuSign's REST API in order to upload the document. Because this is long running in nature, we can have events around this activity. I have a couple of events um, that are non-interrupting basically. The first one is giving user the flexibility to check the business process status. Uh, so there's a check document status API that's being exposed. Uh, and then the other one is a timer that goes off after a specific point of time. In my case, we wait until a day for the callback to come back. Uh, if we don't receive a callback uh, after a day, then we uh, send an email to the applicant saying, you have documents waiting for uh, signatures. So this is the business process orchestration at a very high level. Uh, you can also do fault handling within the business process and uh, dynamic data routing. If the address validation fails, then we can reply back to the caller saying um, they have to correct the address and resubmit the request. If the all scripts interaction fails, then we can catch the fault here and um, send the appropriate message back to the user. So that's the orchestration at a very high level. Uh, the business process by default is exposed as a SOAP endpoint and as a REST endpoint. For the REST endpoint, we generate the Swagger definition. For the SOAP endpoint, we generate the visual definitions. Uh, 
Um, you can look at the interface definitions here, or you can go into our API portal um, and view the um, definitions there. In terms of actually interacting with all scripts and DocuSign, let me go ahead and open up uh, all scripts. All scripts provide the REST API, like I said. Um, so the first step here is to get the token and then use that token to save the patient. There are other operations that it provides, uh, but we are utilizing these two. And these service connectors are something that can be auto-generated if your um, API has a visual definition or if your API uh, provides a swagger definition. Let's look at the DocuSign service connector. Again, DocuSign provides a REST API for us to interact with. Uh, so you can see here we have a login operation uh, that basically returns us uh, an account ID and a base URL against which all subsequent operations should be um, sent to. Uh, and then we have the operation for uploading the document to DocuSign. So whether it's a SOAP API or a REST API, we basically interface through our service connector approach. And we will automatically create this connector for you if your API has a visitor or a swagger definition. So let's actually go ahead and uh, trigger the process and see at runtime um, the behavior of the process. I'll now bring up our API portal and show you the APIs that we have exposed. Um, in the case of member enrollment, I've created a API proxy to our uh, gateway layer. And you can see the REST endpoint you can look at the Swagger definition that has been uh, published for that particular endpoint. And uh, you can actually come here and send a sample request. This is how the API expects the request to be sent. Uh, like I said, the process itself takes in either one member or a list of members as an input. And the response would be the patient ID from all scripts, the subscriber ID from Salesforce and uh, the result of the process itself. I'm going to use a REST client to demo this process. So this is my endpoint. These are, um, this is my request. It contains a couple of uh, applicants. Um, one of them is the subscriber. That's the primary um, applicant. And we are going to validate the address of the primary applicant. And then we are going to create that particular applicant uh, in the downstream systems. Let me go ahead and trigger this process. Uh, before that, um, for this particular endpoint, I can send a JSON request, and then I can, or I can send an XML request, and the business process will serialize um, accordingly based on the content type that you have set. So when I send the request to the process, um, it did some orchestration behind the scenes. Basically, it told me that it was able to successfully create the applicants in all scripts and Salesforce. And then it tells me that the documents have been sent for signatures. This is the patient ID from all scripts, and this is the subscriber ID from Salesforce. So what happened um, behind the scenes? Let me go into Application Integration Console here. And you can see the business process member enrollment is still running, uh, but the sub-processes are completed. Validate address successfully completed. Uh, there were a couple of members, so the save member was called twice. Uh, SFTC member enrollment successfully completed, and the document handling component is still running. So let me open up the parent process member enrollment. So you can see here the validate address successfully uh, finished, and then it say it created those patients in all scripts, created the applicants in Salesforce, and then replied back to the caller, and the business process is basically waiting here. Uh, for the DocuSign component to finish. And if I open up the DocuSign component here, um, I logged into DocuSign. Um, I got the account ID and the base URL from it. I uploaded the document to DocuSign. It returned me an envelope ID um, that, I, that I'll use for correlation. Uh, but it's basically waiting for a callback from DocuSign. You can also see how we log timestamps for each activity. Uh, we also know what was the input that came into the process, all the data changes uh, that happened within the process. All those details are actually tracked. So let me log into DocuSign here. And then I have a document here, 
Tom Jones. Tom Jones was our uh, primary applicant here. So I'm going to go ahead and sign this document. And finish this. At this point of time, DocuSign is going to send a callback request. DocuSign has the concept of webhooks, so we are actually utilizing that. So I have configured a web service endpoint to receive all DocuSign callbacks, and it's going to um, include the envelope ID as part of the callback request. That way I can correlate the request accordingly. And it's going to fire this um, event whenever a document has been signed. So if I refresh my process list, you can see here that the callback was received for this particular envelope ID. Uh, the DocuSign uh, process completed successfully, and then the member enrollment business process completed successfully. Uh, so in conclusion, what we have shown is the ability to expose composite SOAP and REST APIs for the same business process. In the case of REST, we are handling XML and JSON payloads automatically. Uh, we have shown you how to do stateful interactions. We have shown you how to uh, talk to systems using our service connector approach uh, and how the utility can automatically generate this connector for you if it has a visual or a swagger definition. We've, we've very briefly covered our um, API gateway layer where and we have created a proxy and we have shown you uh, how you can actually come and look at the interface definitions and try the API out. Thank you.